Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to be talking about some software, alternative creative software. And the alternative is to our, well, we all know and love, Topaz Studio 2. Um, most of you already know that Studio 2 is no longer being updated. <clears throat> you can still find it for sale on their site, but it's very buried. Um, they're not actively promoting it. The only active products they have right now are Sharpen AI, Denoise AI, Gigapixel AI, and their video AI, which other than the video, the other three are now combined into their new photo AI, uh, which was just released last week. Um, if you already own the three um, AI products, you will have gotten an email from Topaz that you can get photo AI for free. That is, if you own the three products and had a current upgrade, um, yeah, if you had purchased the upgrade plan. If not, you can, um, depending on what you own, when you log into your account, you would see your price to get the photo AI. And the only thing really, I mean, there are some additional features in there. I had been using it for a while, trying it out in the beta. Um, it's nice to have everything in one place, all three of those products. I don't know if it's as important that Gigapixel is in there because that's kind of, you know, only if you need to upsize your images. But it is nice to have the Sharpen and the Denoise there. And they do work well together in that program. So check it out. Um, I have it in the blog with my affiliate link, which I appreciate if you use. So if you use my link and then log into your account, you'll see any special pricing you have. So, yes, we all are <laughs> Loyal Studio 2 users. So there, when I talked to somebody at the company when this all started happening, you know, a couple of years ago, um, they felt that the market was the AI products and that um, there were plenty of other products out there that did what Studio does. I disagree. I have yet to find anything that totally encompasses everything that Studio does because it had so many different components in it. But I have found some things that will do a lot of the creative effects. Um, a couple of them are new to me that I found um, that I did purchase. I, one of them I was just going to do the trial and then it was like, hmm, I kind of like this. So I ended up buying it. So let's get started because I do have a lot I want to cover with you guys. So first up, I'm going to, too many screens open as usual. Um, I'm going to go to Smart Photo Editor, which you've seen me use before, but um, I, I use it a lot to adjust my textures. Um, but you can also use it as a whole editing program. So a lot of these programs are also good if you're not a fan of Photoshop, because not everybody is, um, and a lot of these can replace that as well as the creative aspects. So you'll see I have two versions on my desktop here of Smart Photo Editor. When it first came out, it was only a standalone product. And it the standalone sells for $29.95. It's like perpetually half off on their website. Um, and then a couple of years ago, I think it was, they came out with a, they call it the Smart Photo Editor Studio. And that allows it to be used both as a standalone and as a plugin to Photoshop and I believe to Lightroom as well. Um, so I'm going to open it first as a standalone and just kind of go over a couple things. Um, so this, the studio version with with both the plugin and the standalone is $49.95. Um, I'm also an affiliate for them. So if you use my, I'll put all my links in the blog tomorrow. Um, and they're also in the notes if you've purchased them already. And if not, feel free to grab a copy. They are on sale for five bucks until next week. And you get a bonus set of six new textures that are only available when you purchase the notes. Um, I never put the ones from the notes in the store, so you get a little extra bonus. Um, so this company is Anthropics Technology, and they also make Portrait Pro, 
Portrait Pro Body and Landscape Pro. I have used their Portrait Pro in the past. I don't do a lot of portrait work, um, so I haven't really been upgrading it over the years, but it is a pretty cool product if you, if you do a lot of um, portrait stuff. So anyways, let's do a real quick here. Um, when you first open the standalone, you'll see there are tutorials. So they do have a few tutorials here as well. And there's also more if you go up under the help menu um, and then go into help contents, that will take you to a whole nother menu and you can look for other um, things that you may need some help with. And then you'll notice over on the right hand side, um, they're grayed out because I haven't brought in an image yet. So let me bring in an image so those will show up. So I'm just dragging it in from my other screen, or you could go to File, Open, and just bring in an image. So now you see these are all active. So the effects gallery we'll get to in a second. And then um, there are other things. You can do masking, which I haven't really done very much of in here. Um, you can also do favorites of the different um, effects. And then tools, these are all like your regular editing tools. There's area treatment where you can selectively adjust image areas. Um, the different image treatments let you do global imaging. So if you click that, you get this toolbar on the left where you can do your levels and all of the other basic, you know, editing things that you would do in any image. Um, you can do compositing where you can bring in another image to this. So your underlay is your basic image, and then you can bring in overlays here. Um, there is an erase feature, so you can erase things out of an image. Red eye, fix, text, cropping, straightening, rotating. And then you can create your own effects or edit current ones and then resave them. So what I use this mostly for is the effects gallery. So I'm going to click on the effects gallery. And that is going to open up all these fun presets. And what's cool about these is there are constantly being new things being added because all of these are created by users of the product. And I went through and kind of counted. You can see there are page numbers of, and this is only under the artistic section. So I'm, right now I defaulted to artistic, and there are 687 pages with 12 presets on a page. Um, so I went through and counted all these up, and there are over 22,500 presets in this program. I'm sure there is some overlap between different categories, but there's a lot of presets in here. So because it is overwhelming to look through this many pages of things, it's good to use these different categories to kind of narrow down what you think you might want to do with your image. Um, so there's also down here this uh, best for. So if you know you have like a seascape or a landscape, you can click one of these and it will give you some suggestions from that as well. I usually go in here and choose one of the categories. So for this one, I, I did actually do a couple tweaks with the image treatment. And I have pre-edited this image before. This is one I edited in Lightroom, and I've used this for several projects over the years. Um, so I went in here, and because I knew I was going to be adding some other things on it, I did brighten this up a little bit more. So we're going to bring this to about there. Um, and then the shadows, I brought up a little bit more. Come on. You got to get right on that little uh, dot for it to work. And then the vibrance, I also brought up a little bit. About there. And then from here, I went to the effects gallery. And under style, I chose antique. And then because I have done this before, instead of scrolling through even 94 pages, if you know the name of one of your favorites, there is a search box here. So I'm going to type this in because I wrote down what I wanted. 
So it is called Final Effects. Oops. Yeah, it drops down once you start typing, the ones that start with those words. So Final Effects from me. Um, 006 was the one. And then this is the effect. So <clears throat> once you first find it, then just click OK to make it the active one. And now I like this, but I thought it was a little bit heavy. So what you can adjust on the different presets varies depending on how the person who made this preset um, created it or effect. Um, so these will be different on each one. So on this one, I brought back the merge a little bit um, to lessen the effect of that texture just a little bit. And then if you came in from Photoshop, you would under file see a save and return. Um, but because I did this as a standalone, I'm gonna do rather than save, cause I don't wanna save over my image, I would do save as JPEG or TIFF, and then you can choose what you want. I'm just gonna choose a JPEG, high quality, keep the same size and say, okay. And that will save it. It'll open up the folder that it came from, but then you could um, save it anywhere else if you wanted to move it. And then it will put um, PE for photo editor after it, and then just save. And then it takes a few seconds for it to render out. So this is one, if you go back, if you want to see more about this one, I did do a webinar just on Smart Photo Editor a few months ago, and they're all on my YouTube channel. So you can go back and scroll and look for some more stuff on that. Um, but that's the first one we're going to cover. Um, let's see if we have any questions. Um, yes, this is both Mac and Windows. I forgot to mention that. Thank you. Um, I think m the ones that I'm using today are, but this one definitely is both Mac and Windows. Um, let's see. Yes, Louise, the, the replay will be up by morning and the notes are available now. You can go on and grab those. Um, if you have the original standalone, is it worth getting the new version with the plugin? I think so. I really, I like using software as plugins. I just find it a lot easier. And what's cool, if you go into the old webinar, what I do a lot of times, because sometimes I'll use this like for the Sunday sampler textures, because I'll open it with layers. Let me bring it in real quick. And the first time you use it for the day, it will check for any new effects and then download them. If I go into Photoshop, and let's just bring over that image for a minute. I made some new textures today, so we'll talk about that later. And there's some new stuff available as well. So what I do when I'm in Photoshop is I always want to duplicate the layer because it doesn't make a separate layer. And then you would just go into your filter menu, Anthropic Smart Photo Editor. And what's cool in here is if you want to try different effects and not have to keep saving each file, you can come in here. We'll just choose an effect. And this is where you would see the file save and return that will take you back to Photoshop. Oh, I didn't hit OK first. File, save and return. It tells you if you didn't do that. So we have a preset here. I can turn that layer off, reduplicate my background, and go back and try something else. So I can save a bunch of different versions right here in the same file, and then you could just turn them on and off and save them individually if you want to, you know, if you like it and you, you want to save that one. So I do that a lot. So I do like using it as a plugin. Um, so... Yeah, I am on a, a PC, um, but it, it does work on Macs as well. Um, let's see, do I like this as much as Studio 2? There's nothing like Studio 2. <laughs> Studio just has so many different things in it with textures that are built in, the impression, the glow, all the other filters. Nothing has all of that. So. But there are a lot of really cool things here. So it just kind of depends on what I'm looking to do with an image as to which way I may go with it. Um, 
and the more you play with the different things, the more you get, you know, a feel for what they do. So the next thing I want to show you, and I have mentioned this in my iPhone classes, are the Jixi Pix apps. Um, they make apps for both iPhones, Androids, and PCs and Macs. Um, almost all of the iPhone apps, I think, except maybe two, are also available for Android as well as iPhones. And most of those are priced from $1.99 to $2.99, and there's, I think, two or three that were $4.99. There are three pro apps that are $19.99, and those are the, the phone versions. They do have computer versions for all of their stuff. Um, and if you go, and I have links in the notes to all of these. Like I said, I'll put them also in the blog tomorrow. I'm also a, a, just became an affiliate for this company last year, but I've been using their stuff for quite a while. Um, if you go to their website, let's do that real quick because I wanted to show you kind of where the, some of these things are. Um, I'll just go to .com. I won't worry about my link right now because I'm not purchasing anything. So when you come in here, you'll see under products, you've got professional software and the hobbyist and enthusiast tabs. That's where most of the ones are that I like. Um, the professional ones are the more expensive ones. And I don't think for the desktop versions, I have a lot of those on my phone. Um, I don't really use them on all on the desktop. I only have four things on my desktop. And I'll tell you what, once you get in here, sign up for their newsletter. Um, and the reason is the majority of the products I have for this company, I've gotten for free or at a very steep discount. And the reason is for the last, I think it's like three or four years now, they've done a 12 days of Christmas um, presentation or specials. and they either will give away like a free phone app or actually I think Grungetastic they gave away free for the desktop as well. Um, or they'll do things at like 50% off or something. So if you come into the hobby and enthusiast group, these are most of the ones you're going to want to use. You have a watercolor app, watercolor paint and ink effect, sketching, oil paint on canvas, um, chalk effects. This is a really good black and white one I, I have for my phone. I really like that. You can do cartoon effects. There's a lot of different things in here. The, my favorites are the Grungetastic, of course, <laughs> and um, they even have an infrared uh, simulator. They also have, where's my vintage scene? I love that one on my phone. I use a lot too. Um, so I'm going to show you real quick um, oh, we have some questions. Okay. Um, let's see. All right. Jixi picks on the app store, but the plugin versions. Yes. Plugins are only available from the website and that's what I'm an affiliate for. They don't do affiliates for the phones. Um, you have to go to the app store or the, the Google store or whatever for Androids. Um, so let's see the smart photo editor and the studio that the one, the studio is the, um, version that had the plugins in the Smart Photo e Editor. Yes, Jixi Picks is a lot of fun. I really like it. So I'm going to show you. Um, some of them will install as plugins. The Chromatic Edges and Spectral are due, but Grungetastic is only a standalone. The Hallow's Eve and Happy Holidays are really fun holiday ones, and these were freebie ones. Um, and our first virtual conference, they gave me a version of Grungetastic or a copy of Grungetastic for all of our attendees. So it's a $10 app, so it's not expensive even for um, desktop. Um, so I'm going to open. What I like about their apps too is they all have the same basic interface and they're very easy to use. And the phone ones look just like this as well. Um, so when you open any of them, you have this basic kind of an interface. You can either go file open or I'm just going to drag for my other screen. This was from one of our Barnes workshops. So when you first bring something in, it will randomly apply a preset. Don't worry about that because we're going to change that. Um, 
So this one I'm going to go to. So each one, the, the one, the difference in the different apps is the categories down here. So you'll see that this one's got a bunch of categories. It's pop grunge, bleached grunge, distressed, gritty, worn, and worn pop. Um, I probably use the grunge, distressed, and gritty the most. Um, some, But you can see with some of these, they kind of give you the effects like the old Topaz Simplify, if you really like that kind of an effect. And you can customize all these presets, which is really cool. So we're going to go to the Distressed category, and I'm going to use number 18. And I'm going to make some changes to this. So we're going to go to the second texture. So you can change which textures it's using. So I'm going to just click on the box of the texture. And you can see there's a whole bunch in here. And I'm going to change. Let's see. Actually, I want to close that for a second. I actually want to change the color. So you can also change the color by clicking in the color box trying to read my own notes. So we're changing the purple to like an orange color. And of course, I just moved my sliders before to find it, but so that I can replicate it for you guys, um, type for in texture. the um, the uh, numbers for you. And tab. Um, so Colleen says, can we bring in our own textures? I don't believe so. Um, I haven't found a way to do that. Let's see. I don't think there is like an import here. No, these all come pre-stocked in here. Let's see what's up under settings. No, that just opens. That just takes you to the website. No, as an answer to that question, Colleen. Um, you can't change that one. You cannot add um, additional layers or a second photo. So that would not be a way to do that either. Um, okay, so we changed that color. Flip the page of my notes. So I want to lighten this paper tint. So we're going to change that to um, 82, 59, 22. Then I'm going to go to, I, I tried, wanted to try changing the paper texture. So this one is, where am I going? Paper tint, pampers. This one down here, they used, no, nope, that's not the one I wanted. I wanted number 12. So we used that one. I think I wrote down the wrong preset because this does not look like the one in my, <laughs> Finished project. I'm wondering if I chose the wrong category. I'm going to just look over at grunge for a second. Hmm. I think maybe that, no, that's not the one either. All right, we'll go with this one. We'll see where we get. We may end up with a different version. Um, but that's what's fun about these is you can just try different things. So paper strength, and then I'm going to bring that back. You can bring back the opacity of everything a little bit, that with using the sliders. And then I went back to the Grunge 2 strength, and I changed this one down to 24. And then I brought this one down to 25. But I don't want that texture. I think that one's too heavy. So let's go. Uh, let's try something else. Mm, that didn't change that. So where's that one? So you can also change the fade of the whole effect over your image. And let's change the edge, which I think is what's giving us this dark part here. Yeah. And we're going to go to number two, which is going to be a lot softer. And then change our slider back to that. And then we can also change the color to 37, 29, 5. That's more like it. And let's 
see. And then you go up to the fade, and we change that to about 20. And you can also change the tone. I mean, that's yeah, that looks more a little bit more like what I was playing with before. Um, I, I think I want that to be a little less pink. Let's bring back the red here. I'm just kind of winging it a little bit. So you could just play around with the sliders, but all of this is very customizable. And then to save it, you'll go to this second icon, save your image or product, and you'll click it and then hit save, and then you can save it to wherever. You can also send it to one of the other products if you want to then add something else if you had other ones of their products on your computer. So another fun thing to do in here and this is very unique to this their products, is up here in the right-hand corner, top, you see this little pair of dice? This, if you click it, it's kind of like, let's roll the dice, and, and it's going to randomly pick different effects for you. And if you're not sure what you want to do with an image, sometimes it's a fun way to sit and play. I'll do this sometimes on my iPad with images, like when you're watching TV or something. And then if you find something, you, eh, I kind of like that, then you can go in and, you know, change up the textures and, and try something different. If you do find something you like, though, save it, because you may never get back to that one again, um, doing it that way. But that's a fun way to play around with this program as well. Um, yeah, I agree, Pat. I do have trouble figuring out which preset you're on because it doesn't really highlight. It shows the gritty category, but it doesn't have them highlighted. So that's why I would say if you find something you like, save it while you're you're there. Because <laughs> um, it does say you're in the gritty category, but it doesn't tell you which number that you're on. So that's um, Jixie Pick. So again, if you, if you like something, Sandy, you'll just... You know, save that file is what I mean. Um, and then you can also file, let's see. You can also, what if you modify this preset like I did with the previous one and you like that preset, then you can come in here and save the preset. And what it will do is you name it, you could say Hazel 1, say OK. And then it adds it to the end of whatever category it came from. So if it was under gritty, then it adds it over here to the right. I think I saved one somewhere else. I don't remember if I did. I thought I did, but maybe I didn't. But you can save it that way, and it would stay over here for you, so you could come back to it again. Um, so saving is, yeah, it's very, very easy, David. What's that, dear? Um, I think I covered everything. Let's see. Ken says, I found that you can take the finished effect, save it, then use it as an overlay on your original photo. And it creates interesting effects by adjusting the opacity. Hmm. That would be an interesting way to go. Um, can you rotate or flip textures? I don't think so. No. There's there's no edit in once you're in here, um, so I mean they they are simpler programs than like you know the Topaz stuff, but they still have a lot of versatility. Um, so it's a you know it's a pretty cool way that you can adjust your your photos. Um, what is your opinion on whether to use the iPad version or the computer version? Um, some things I like doing on the computer just because you're working on a larger, you know, workspace. But I do like playing with these with my phone images. So I do, you know, the iPad is not bad because you're working on a bigger space. I have done a bunch on my phone, especially when I'm out shooting. I may want to, you know, post something online real quick and I'll, I'll come into one of these programs and do an effect or two. Um, so I, you know, if I had the, um, you know, had them all on my computer, I would definitely use them on my computer, but having them on the phone is fun as well. Um, what file types can be used? I think you can bring in pretty much anything. Uh, let's see if it will let me bring in a TIFF. I don't know if I've tried that or not. I think so. Yep. So 
it, I just brought in a TIFF image, and I'll show you the one that I actually finished previously. And that was what it came out as. Um, so this was the um, the red barn finish, and then I masked, I brightened it, and and because I wanted to brighten the bottom a little bit, so I brightened it up and used a mask to mask some of that off at the top because I don't want to over brighten the top. Um, so I did do some further work in Photoshop. So let's go on because I have a couple more I want to show you. I don't know if you can use a raw file in there. I don't think I've ever tried that, which I don't think would be a good thing because a raw file, you're going to want to make sure you have an edited file. So I would probably only bring in like a TIFF or a JPEG. So the next thing I want to show you is one called Dynamic Auto Painter. And this one was a new one that I discovered. And um, I'm going to close that. And Dave was actually playing with it today. Um, this one you can put on two computers. So I loaded it to both of our computers. This one is probably the closest to a lot of the Topaz effects and presets that I found, um, especially the impression stuff. So you'll see that it's got all different styles of painting. This Joaquin, we, and then a lot of them have a number there, which means there's more than one version if you hit the little down arrow. Um, so like Golden Age has two different ones. Um, this one's got five different ones in here. So let's, um, I'm going to bring in an image. This one is for both PC and Mac. It is um, $89 plus tax. If you do the trial, which I did before I, I bought it. I did a trial one when I was doing the notes. I'll show you what it, this is what we're going to end up doing. You will get this watermark across it. If you don't purchase it, you'll have that across the bottom. Um, so let's bring in our image. So again, I'm just dragging from my other screen, but you would go to file, you know, open image or open your browser. And then this it's got a lot of detail to it, a lot of adjustability. Um, so I brought in that. So over on the left, I'm going to use Acrowell. This one's got eight different versions. I used the is that the one I used? No, Acrowell Nouveau is the one I used. This one. And then this one has some, you know, bias to different colors. So I used the bias blue and once you you do something you can then come down to the bottom you'll see you're on the presets tab on the very lower left here if you get, click on the painter tab you can start adjusting brushes and things like that um, and then there's a whole bunch of i haven't even gotten to all of these tabs myself yet and then there is under these pink kind of colored tabs you can get into doing more fine line, you know, outlining. You can change the canvas it's on, different material, color adjust, and you can do layers in here, which I have not tried yet. So from here, what I suggest doing first is to kind of try the preset, see what it does, and then you can modify it. So once you find a preset, then you just click the start button. And depending on the complexity of the preset it does take a little time so you can see it's preparing and it tells you down here in the lower right exactly what it's doing you'll see these different brushes flashing but what's cool is if you're trying to do something very abstract say I like this as a texture I can hit stop right now and save that file the way it is so sometimes you, you when it starts going, you're like, oh, that would make a really nice texture just the way it is. So you can stop the file and save it and have yourself a, a texture, which is pretty cool. So this one's actually going pretty quick. There was one I did last night when I was showing the program to Dave that took a couple minutes to run. It was a very involved one. And I'll show you what the the finished product looked like. Yeah, as Dave said, you, you'll see the different steps, like this one's finished already, but you can see some of them really down lots of layers of brush strokes. And these are 
Lake Impression was built with real paintbrush strokes. This one is as well. So this is probably the closest thing I've found to really being as adjustable as Impression. Um, yeah, it's Dynamic Auto Painter Pro. Um, it's by Media Chance, so that's also in the um, the notes. And again, I'll, I'll post these in tomorrow's blog so you can find them. Yes, sir. Um, I have, I don't have a discount for this one. Um, I did apply to be an affiliate with them, but I have not heard back yet. Um, this one is eighty nine dollars plus tax. Um, and then they also make um, another kind of, it's sort of part of this, but I guess they have a, a separate product called Photo Reactor where you can build your own effects. And that's, yeah, there is a Photo Reactor in here, but they have a separate product for that too. Um, it's $69 or $89 with the plug-in. And there's, if you like to create patterns, they have a pattern studio to create seamless patterns for $38. That's separate as well. Um, so once this ran, I did decide I wanted to make some adjustments. So where are we? Just, um, let's see if I can do this quickly. So under the palette, let's see. I moved. I moved, there's like expressive and realistic here. I moved that one box to the left. And then the dry wet slider, I moved more in the middle. And then under canvas, let's see. Gotta remember where all this stuff is because I've only been in here a few times. Okay, under the canvas, there's a default. And that's not where I changed it. Oh, here it is, where it says real canvas. Right now it's on paper. You can choose oil canvas. That will give it more of that look like it was painted on canvas. And then under dynamic painter, um, one, it, it, they have faithful and impressionistic. So one is more abstract. So I moved the slider a little bit more to the right. So once you, you know, like I said, you saw what it did. So I tried some adjustments and then hit start again and it will go ahead and re reprocess. And it goes a little bit faster because it's already done it once, so it didn't seem to take as long for the second one. What's that, dear? Yes, this is both PC and Mac. Um, do they have an iPad version? No, it's just, this is only for computers, not not iPads. So, you know, this would be a really pretty texture. So <laughs> I may have to go back later and resave some of these. Um, James says, I know some of these new programs simulate Studio 2. So my question is, if you have the latest Studio 2, is there a need to purchase additional similar software at this time? I understand the need for alternate software if Studio 2 is discontinued. Yes. Um, you, If your studio is still working, which mine is as well, um, but some people, if you've got, especially like the newer Mac systems, I know are having some issues with the studio at this point um, because they're not updating studio anymore. So there will come a time when your systems keep updating. Um, I have not gone to Windows 11 yet, and I know I've heard some people with Windows 11 have issues. Some people have not. I'm still using Windows 10. Um, primarily because I don't need all those issues with all my software. I don't really want to spend more money on software at this point um, that I already have. But, you know, it, it's not going to be in the, the too far future that all this starts happening. So even if you don't want to purchase now, it's good to make a note of some of these programs and kind of keep an eye on them. And I'm sure there will continue to be other things out there, especially with all of the AI technology, which almost everything is, is based on now. Um, Connie, yeah, I'm not sure if it will work on Windows 11. I've heard some people yes and some people no um, with the studio. So I can't tell you for sure. <laughs> um, I know some of the newer Mac operating systems have had an issue. Yeah, Dave says, you know, he would suggest getting something else or at least, you know, you know about these things. So if you do start having 
issues, then you can always look at some of these other programs. Um, Fran says hers is working with the Windows 11. So it, it depends on a lot of different things, I'm sure. Um, oh, Darcy said she's using Studio One and Two on an HP with Windows 11. So there you go. So um, that's a good thing. I'm, I'm glad that it is working. Um, but again, it, there's going to come a time when it doesn't. So looks like for this at this point it is. Um, so there you go. So this was my finished image. And I thought it was a pretty cool version of something I had done. You know, it was a textured project. I think I did this in like one of my very first webinars. Um, and another version of it, you know, a more creative kind of background. So that's that one. So next we're going to do, this is one that I've had and just hadn't really used a whole lot. It's called Photo Sketcher, F-O-T-O -O Sketcher. Uh, Amy says, I'm working with 11, where is it, also, and 2 still works for me. It's a new computer, and I could not get Studio 1 installed. Yeah, I would not expect Studio 1 to be working on any new operating systems, because that one is even older. You know, that's like two years older than Studio 2. Um, yeah, it's fun. Even if you do the trial versions, if you don't want to purchase them now, you know, just to play around, you will get the watermarks on them, but you know, at least you can kind of get familiar with them and see if you really like the way they work. Um, this one, Photo Sketcher, is for both PC and Macs, but it is not compatible with Catalina. So if you have, I guess, a newer Mac, um, it won't work. The good thing about this one is it's free. Um, they do accept donations. Um, and I do want to show you their website real quick because you should be very careful, especially with free things. And I know I've mentioned this several times with um, even some of the sites where you get free brushes and fonts and things that I tell you about. You got to be careful of these pop-ups. Um, so this is photosketcher.com. When you go to... Right here, you'll see it already. And this one happens to be Topaz Labs ad, but there are some times when you go to, let's see if we go to, 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 to find, yeah, now that's a pop-up ad. That has absolutely nothing to do with this program whatsoever. So it even says ad in the corner. Free, start a free trial. Free trial to what? That has nothing to do with the free, you know, this is a free program. So these kind of, boxes where it says open or here start download that is not the program so you want to make sure you get to on the download tab yeah start download start download those are ads you want to go to this section that is the actual name of the program in it when you download this um yeah, they always have little, yeah, if you, you get these little ad choices, you know, this little, yeah, or sometimes, yeah, wave browser, you know, you got to be careful. You just need to, any of these things, especially when they're free, they, that's how they make the money is to have these ads. So just be careful. Um, so let's go back to the program. What's that, dear? Marge says, what does Deep Art do? Just saw it on your screen. We're going to get to that one next. <laughs> I'll show you that one in just a minute. So this one, I'm going to bring in an image. So this is kind of a before and after. The left is your before. I haven't done anything, so the right hand side looks the same and you could I'm just scrolling back on my mouse so I can you can either get really zoomed in or and you can you know click and drag to get the part of the image in that you want so this one is also a painting style program um, so we're going to select our drawing style I gotta remember where everything is because again I don't use these all the time I've had this one for a long time and haven't really done a whole lot with it. So here's where you would go file open, edit, you can 
do a bunch of different things. Here you could do some basic adjustments, but I would use this to bring in an image and the cup of coffee is if you want to make a donation. Um, that's this how about a coffee. So that's where you can donate to them if you so choose. And why am I not seeing the painting styles? No, okay, there we go. Usually this pops up, that's why I was a little confused, but it's this little palette, I guess because I clicked off of the program, maybe it went away. So this is where you choose a whole lot of different painting styles. And again, it's if you hover over it, it does kind of give you a preview of what it would do to that bird image they had in the, the preview. Um, so I selected under painting effect, eight, the expressive brush strokes. And I'll kind of give you a little preview down here too. And then you can change the sliders as well. So this is somewhere up in the top of my image, I think. There we go. There's like an, and you can change the size smaller or larger here. I kind of like just looking at that, but so maximum brush size, I left it 50. Number of brush strokes, I made those a little bit higher. Um, brush stroke precision, I brought down because I wanted kind of a looser painting style. And I did do this a few times. And in the notes, I have a couple of the versions in there. Um, level of contrast here and level of details I brought down. Again, I didn't want as much detail in this. And then you can do soften edges. You can add a frame under the texture. I left that at normal. Um, you can do a light texture, normal or strong. And that's the texture of the like canvas that you're painting on. And then you just hit draw. You can ask load custom brushes, which I have not tried to do yet. And then um, you'll see the progress bar down here at the bottom. So this was the first settings that I tried, and then I did try a couple of others. So you can see how it's starting to look with the painting. And that's not even halfway done yet. So because these are, you know, doing a whole lot of processing and laying down brush strokes, they do take a little bit of time um, to process. And then I did one with a bigger brush size, but I'm going to jump to the next one because I want to make sure to get to our last project. Actually, I may just show you the finished one so you can see the difference for timing. But you can see the, the process and then you can go back in and make more changes if you wish. And there you have it. So you can come in and change more or if I zoom in, you can see you know, this was the before, and now this is the painted version. So I'll open these in Photoshop. So that was, this is the first one. I'll zoom in so you can see it. That's the version like we just did. And then this one was with a bigger brush size. So you can see this one's a little bit smaller brush size, more, more detail. A bigger brush made it more painterly. And then I tried one with the a different painting style. And you can see this one added a lot more texture to the background as well. And a very different style of painting. So there's lots of cool effects in here. I, I haven't used this one a ton, but I do like it. And then another one I tried, I'll show you my before and after. I took this image into there and got this effect and I really like the way it kind of changed up the background on it as well of the orchid um, so that was uh, another cool one all right so next up let's close all of these so let's go to the deep artifacts so this is another one I I actually have it on my iPad they do make a version 
Um, this is also both PC and Mac and iPhone and Android. This one is, you can either do a subscription. One month is $9.90, three months is $25, which comes out you know, less per month. And a one year subscription is $80 for $6.66 a month. Or you can do a one-time purchase for $129, and until Thursday, they're running a 20% off sale. So I just bought it yesterday. I wasn't going to buy it at first, and then I was like, hmm, I kind of like this one. Um, the phone versions are $399, and if you don't purchase it, there's like watermarks all over it when you're done. So there's like, it, it's fun to play, but you won't have anything usable. So I'm going to bring in, and this is just an unedited iPhone image that I use in my iPhone class. And just to show you what some of this does, what these presets remind me of is the AI Remix filter in Studio. They kind of have that same feel. Um, so the couple of them that I liked on this were, there were a few things that I, like this Aurora one. And you see there are, you know, sliders on the left. You can do some editing here as well. I thought that one was pretty cool. And these are all under this art style AI. It's all AI based. Um, I thought that one was cool. I think my favorite one was this manga. And you can see it's, you know, applying it. I thought that one was pretty. Um, and then you can you can pull back on the intensity of the effect. You can add more contrast or less contrast. You can brighten and darken. You can add more saturation. You don't have to move these sliders much for them to really um, have an effect. You can change the hue. You can blur. You can sharpen. Um, Boca is just going to make the whole thing soft if you wanted to use it as a background image. Um, you can create a grayscale version. Um, you can create, if you want to flip it, you can mirror it. You can see a before and after with the little things down here. If you want to compare your original, there's different ways of looking at it. And these are if you have people in the image. And then you can reset the image, you know, reset all these sliders. And then the other one I kind of liked was, it'd be a lot easier if they were in alphabetical order, but they're not. <laughs> um, if I can find it. There's a lot in here, as you can see. I'm, I'm doing a lot of scrolling and there's a lot of different styles. I haven't even tried all of these yet. Ooh, that one's kind of pretty and it's not too over the top it kind of has a wintry feel to it so again it's one of the you know this is kind of one of those fun ones you can just sit and play um, and find some cool things and then let's see abstract ai you can actually bring in an image or save an image as your um to become the texture and there is a random thing here like with the jixi picks so I had saved a preset. I think once I, I modified one, I saved it, and that became like my um, base image. And you can also change brush styles and style weight. So there's definitely a lot of cool things out there. Um, so that one's not bad either. It's free on the one I just downloaded from. What's that? The artifacts. Yeah. Free. Yes, you can download it for. Oh, Dave said it was free on your phone. Yeah, Google on the Google. Oh. Oh, there is. Yeah, there's a phone app for, but without the pro version, you're gonna have a watermark on it. Okay, well. So the free version is gonna give you a watermark even on the phone. Um, the pro version is three ninety nine, and that will get rid of the watermarks. Um. 
in Pixio. I think I looked at that one, and I, I agree with Stephanie that it was very complex. Um, th uh, there's a couple others I tried that I wasn't as impressed with once I actually got in there. Um, but I'll keep looking for things, and you know, down the road we could do another webinar on some other things that I come across. But I thought these were all um, pretty reasonable substitutes. Like I said, not for the whole Studio Suite, because there is nothing that I found that is everything that Studio does. Um, but it definitely can give you some of the creative options that um, Studio has. Um, like this one is like some more like the AI remix. Some of the others are more like the painting style programs. Um, and I actually got it all done in an hour. We've got a couple minutes to spare. So if anybody has any other questions. Um, I did add four new texture sets today to our background paper texture sets, a set of new grunge brushes, which are just like little spots of grunge you can kind of add wherever you want on an image, and a new set of borders that you get both the brushes and the PNGs and the JPEGs of. And so those four, as well as all my other texture sets and brush sets and gradients and crop shapes, are 33% off um, with webinar 33 code. And that will be good until next Tuesday. And again, the, the notes are also available on sale till next Tuesday. Um, cool. Somebody says, Exposure X7, formerly Alien Skin. No, nope, I haven't checked that one out. So I'm going to write that down and check it out. Um, exposure X7. I have heard of Alien Skin, but I hadn't heard of that one. Um, yeah, there's lots of cool things out there. Um, okay, that, Dave said that one's $149. Um, and somebody says, check out Paint, P-A-I-N-N-T. I will do that. Um, I noticed Filter Forge on your screen. Do you like it? Uh, I Yeah, I agree, March, that I, I've had several versions of Filter Forge, and I still haven't gotten the hang of it. And I've also, this Imagely's Picture Lab, the, the gal who designed it is in our texture group, and I have yet to really figure that one out. And I'm not really good at sitting and reading a whole lot of instructions. I have to admit, I'm really bad at that. Um, so I think I should be able to like jump in a picture and, and into a program and kind of figure it out, which most of these others, I, I've done that. Rebel is another one. I, I downloaded the demo. I was going to show you guys this one. It's another painterly one. Um, it's a little pricier. Um, I can't remember now what the, the cost was, but it's a little bit pricier. But it has a ton of versatility. Um, so you you are... Oh, I know why I didn't show you this one. Because this one is not like presets. This one is you are actually taking a paintbrush and picking a color and painting. And you can adjust whether it's like watercolor, the different styles of brushes. So I did play with the trial a little bit, but it really doesn't fit like as a replacement for um, for a topaz. But it's kind of cool because it really does like mix the colors just like real paint. So if you want to do real true digital painting, this would be a really good program for it. Um, not what I do, but it is, um, you know, a pretty cool product, and you can see how it's, you know, taking on the contours of the paper, and it's a really neat program. It just isn't really, it's not for working on photos, it's for painting. Alrighty, I think we have covered it all. Oh, somebody else said O-L-L-K for Painter by Corel. Okay, I'll check that one out too. Okay. Yeah, Corel can be a, a tough program if you're not familiar with that, at least I think. Um, but I thank you everybody for being here. Um, if you have any other follow-up questions, you can always email me, as you know. Um, 
Gypsy picks are one of my favorites because they're very easy to learn and use. Um, and definitely, you know, get some for your phone, at least, and play around with it there and kind of get used to them that way. Alrighty. Thanks, everybody. We'll talk to you again real soon. Have a good night.